Spies during the Second World War, after being captured, would be dealt with, usually brutally, and they were subjected to harrowing executions. The Americans would, during the conflict and after, execute a number of teenage Germans who were convicted of being involved in spying. They showed little remorse, and the Germans would demonstrate this ruthlessness, especially when they captured female spies who worked with British Special Operations Executive. There were accounts of these women being tortured heavily, and being brutalised to a harrowing extent, and a collection of spies were even brought to a concentration camp, and were then burned alive. But one of those women who encountered this brutal fate was Vera Lee, who at the age of 41 was thrown alive into the ovens of Natzweiler Struthof concentration camp and the crematorium there. It was a horrific end for a woman who had dreamt of being part of liberating France from the tyranny of Nazi occupation. Join us today as we look at the execution of the female spy burned alive in a concentration camp oven. And as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Vera Lee was born in March 1903 and was from Yorkshire in England. As a child, she had been abandoned and she was adopted by an American racehorse trainer who renamed her Vera Lee. Vera would grow up around the horse and stable industry and she would work near to Paris inside a training centre and the race course there. She wanted to become a jockey, and she would then work in fashion, and would enter a number of fashion houses in Paris, and she was well known in the social scene inside of the French capital. But during the Second World War, France would suffer heavily, and Paris would fall in 1940, and following this, Vera would then left to go to Lyon, where she joined her fiancé, who was a director of a Portuguese film company. Vera wanted to get back to England, and she wanted to help others escape the tyranny of the Nazis, and she aided the underground escape lines and would smuggle wanted Allied servicemen out of France. She would help them escape over the Pyrenees into Spain, where they would then make it back to England, and she would eventually take that route herself to escape the Germans. Vera Lee would then get to England in 1942, and she wanted to help with the war effort, and as a French speaker, she was recruited by SOE to become a spy. She passed the interviews and was regarded as a good student who was brave and willing to give any work a try, and she was particularly good with her hands in handling demolition charges and wires. She was 40 years old and was older than some of the other recruits, but she did head back to France and worked with the First Aid Nursing Yeomanry, helping injured Allied soldiers, but she was then given her mission by SOE to fly by aircraft and land behind enemy lines near to Tours. She would arrive in France and was to work as a courier of information between different resistance networks, and she was to work with the Paris-based Prosper Circuit, and she would also link other resistance groups. Her role was pivotal, but it was dangerous, and she assumed a different identity, and she would report back to her superiors in London, before she worked inside of Paris staying in an apartment. Vera Lee worked inside of different cafes and drifted into the life of the French capital, but the city was suffering under German occupation, and many people lived very suspiciously. She would almost have her cover blown when she encountered her sister's husband, but whilst hiding in the capital and working and reporting back, Vera continued to repatriate Allied soldiers back to Britain, and some stayed in her safe houses which were overseen by her. But it wasn't long before her cover was blown. She worked with another SOE agent and she ran her husband's business, and Vera would meet with other agents at a cafe nearby in Paris. But the inventor's spy network had been betrayed, and quickly Vera Lee was arrested, and she was then transported to the Freinet prison outside of Paris. She gave a false identity to the Gestapo, and she did not give over any information, but she didn't need to, as the German captors knew all about her and her work. Vera Lee was tortured, and then on the 13th of May 1944, with three other female SOE agents, she was moved to the Gestapo Paris headquarters in Avenue Foch, with four other women of F section who were agents. The women were then taken by railway station handcuffed to a guard and were taken on a train. It was said by one of the captured women who survived the war that, we were starting on this journey together in fear, but all of us hoping for something above all that we would remain together. We had all a taste already of what things could be like, none of us did expect for anything very much, we all knew they could put us to death. I was the only one officially condemned to death, the others were not, but there was always a fugitive ray of hope that some miracle will take place. The women were sent to Germany and were held in separate cells in a prison in Karlsruhe, and the agents were treated in the same manner as other prisoners. 
They heard Allied bombers overhead each night, bombing German targets, and they thought the war was coming to an end. But Vera Lee would not see out the end of the Second World War. She, along with three other female spies, were taken on the 6th of July 1944 into the reception room of the prison and were given their possessions back before two Gestapo men took custody of the women. They were taken to the Natzweiler Skruthoff concentration camp in France and they arrived there at about 3.30 in the afternoon. The women's appearance at the camp shocked other inmates as it was rare that four women would be sent there altogether and they were led through the main camp to the cells at the bottom of the camp and they were held there until the evening. One prisoner said, one could see from their appearance that they hadn't come from a camp. They seemed young, they were fairly well groomed, their clothes were not rubbish and their hair was brushed, and each had a case in their hand. Vera Lee was one of these four women who was placed in a cell, and she would speak with the other women and the other prisoners, but what came next was completely barbaric. The women had been transferred to a concentration camp for their execution, and the inmates of Natzweiler would comment on what they saw and heard. That evening, the SS guards, one by one, escorted the four women, including Vera Lee, into the crematorium at around three-minute intervals. Inside of the crematorium, the women were told to undress for a medical checkup, and a doctor then tried to inject the women with what they claimed was a vaccine for typhus, but it was actually a deadly injection of phenol, which they believed would kill the women. The former female spies would then lose consciousness, and they were then thrown into the crematorium oven. But with the accounts from the prisoners, it was clear that the injection had not killed all of the women. One prisoner stated, The next morning the German prisoner in charge of the crematorium explained to me that each time the door of the oven was opened, the flames came out of the chimney, and that meant a body had been put in the oven. I saw the flames four times. He would later state of the executions of the women and Vera Lee that, We heard low voices in the next room, and the noise of a body being dragged along the floor and he whispered to me that he could see people being dragged something along the floor which was below his angle of vision through the fanlight. At the same time this body was being brought past, we heard the noise of heavy breathing and low groaning combined, and again we heard the same noises and regular groans as the next two insensible women were dragged away. The fourth, however, resisted in the corridor. I heard her say porky, as I heard a voice, and I recognised the doctor, who was in civilian clothes, say, Poor Typhus. We then heard the noise of a struggle and the muffled cries of the woman. I assumed that someone held a hand over her mouth. I heard the woman being dragged away too. She was groaning louder than the others. From the noise of the crematorium oven doors, which I heard, I can state definitely that in each case, the groaning women were placed immediately in the crematorium oven. When the officials had gone, we went to the crematorium oven, opened the door and saw there were four blackened bodies within. Next morning in the course of my duties, I had to clear the ashes out of the crematorium oven. I found a pink woman's stocking garter on the floor near to it. Other witnesses came forward about the executions, and they confirmed that there was a struggle with one of the women at least being shoved in the furnace, and it was said by an SS doctor that, when the last woman was halfway in the oven, she had been put in feet first. She had come to her senses and struggled. As there were sufficient men in there, they were able to push her in the oven, but not before she had resisted and scratched Peter Straub's face. The next day, Schultz noticed that the face of the camp executioner Straub had been severely scratched. There was ever little reprisal for the slaughter of these female spies. But following the war, Vera Lee was awarded the King's Commendation for Brave Conduct, along with the other female spies, and she was a woman who gave her life to try to save others and to try and liberate France. She was 41 when she was brutally killed inside the concentration camp ovens, and she was subjected to a bloody and brutal ordeal following her capture. Her role in the war was to try and link different spy networks together, and despite returning to life in Paris and working well undercover, she would be captured, but her harrowing demise inside of a concentration camp encapsulated the evil of the Nazis during World War II. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.